and welcome back to my film and TV channel. Hope you're all staying safe and well. And we've got a, a film that's just appeared at the cinemas recently. It's been around at the cinema. It's not. I don't think it's had a streaming release yet. So, uh, yeah, it's, for me, it's it is a film perhaps better watched at home than actually going out and watching it from its from its level. But we'll tell you about it anyway. Um, it's certainly got a big title. Um, certainly got a big character in it. Yes, the return of Mr. Brendan Fraser. Yes, uh, I do like Brendan Fraser, I must admit. And this film we're going to have a look at today is called The Whale. Please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notification. It would be great to have you on board. All film reviews like this one I do. TV drama reviews, information vlogs. Excuse me. Even the odd uh, quiz at special occasions. So if you enjoy a quiz, just check out the channel. There is football stuff on there as well, but that's that's not your bag. Don't worry about it. There's loads of film and TV stuff as well. It's a 15 certificate. The Whale, 117 minutes, classed as a psychological drama film. And it's directed by Darren Aronsky and written by Samuel D. Hunter based on his 2012 play of the same name. Yeah, a little bit more on that in a moment. How's it faring? Well, the public like it. The public do. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes audience, 91% positivity, 4.5 out of 5. The consensus with the heartbreaking story brought powerfully to life by Brendan Fraser's starring performance, the whale's as hard to watch as it is to look away from. Yeah, can't disagree with that too much. Internet movie database, Joe Public, a very healthy 7.9 out of 10, and that's over 34,500 scores. So uh, a fair selection and it is a 93% positivity rating, which, which is good. And as I say, it stars old Brendan Fraser in this, Sadi Sink, Hong, Hong Cho, Ty Simpkins and Samantha Morton all star in this. A good, a good little cast. Uh, not many, but a good little cast. And it's about, well, it's about a reclusive and obese, yeah, a very obese English teacher who tries to restore his relationship with his teenage daughter and other people as well. Uh, interesting. So, it, as I said before, it was based on a, a stage play, a, a drama, and you, you get that feel with it, you get that vibe with it. It had a limited theatrical release in the United States on December the 9th, and then it got a, a major on December the 21st, and obviously into January, uh, check your territory, which may still be on, but it might be coming to an end now, so you might have to watch out for it now on streaming. And yes, it was only a budget of three million, which is understandable, obviously not paid Brendan Fraser much, although he probably got part of the profits, because it cost three million budget, but it's already recouped 29 million at the box office, so uh, it's going to make a few quid, this, so uh, it's sort of film where the actors should perhaps uh, put a little a percentage in the contracts as well. But three million is nothing, is it? I mean, looking at it, you can't make an episode of uh, probably can't make an episode of Coronation Street for less than three million dollars. These well, probably good luck in the state of it uh, these days. Rotten Tomatoes, what are they thinking? What about the critics? Well, the critics are okay, not not as uh, totally invested as the audience of Rotten Tomatoes. Sixty five percent, but that's based on three hundred and eight reviews, so a hell of a lot. A rating of six point seven out of ten. Nothing wrong with that. Two hundred fresh, although there are a hundred and eight rotten, so it is two thirds to one third, which is interesting. Interesting. Wendy Eyes from The Observer here in the UK, she said, its redeeming strength is the authenticity, naughty characters, authentic, sorry, authentically, 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 yeah, very ticklish, because he said naughty, you see, naughty ash, if you're from the UK, you tickling stick and naughty ash, sorry, it's my, that's what threw me, authentically naughty characters and the performers that inhabit them. Well, there you go. Yeah, it is all about the performances, of course. It is when you've got a, a film set in one one set on one set. It's got to be. It's got to be about the characters, hasn't it? Sophie Butcher for Empire Empire Magazine said the whale is best appreciated as a moving, stripped back character study with a stunning lead performance. Yes, a lot of some people were a bit poo pooey about the lead performance. I thought Brendan Fraser did excellent. David Fear from the Rolling Stones said, For every sunbeam of humanity, Fraser lets shine through this soul and the this soul, this film summons a, a half dozen dark clouds to try and dampen it. Yeah, he didn't like it so much. The consensus of the site says, Held together by a killer, Brendan Fraser, the whale sings a song of empathy that will leave most viewers blubbering. Yeah, it must yeah, it was yeah, we'll talk about the ending later. Metacritic, the other site we'll look at. 
60 out of 100. So again, fine. That's based on 55 critics. He scored anywhere between a 40 and a 100. I think there's only one 40 score. I thought all the rest. I think all the rest was 60s or more. The Guardians, Peter Bradshaw, scored it just 40. He said Fraser does an honest job in the role of Charlie, and Hong Chow brings a welcome face to a sinew to the drama. But this Sucrose film is very underpowered. Okay, Independence Jeffrey McNabby liked it a little bit better. He said the pathos is laid on very thick or pathos, pathos. At times you wonder why a filmmaker as sophisticated as Rafoski is resorting to such manipulative tactics. Beneath all its blubber though, see what they've done there, this turns out to be a film with a very big heart. It does. He needs a big heart, doesn't he, to get the blood pumping around that body in this. Right, my score. My score on this, yes, I'm going to give it a very good 6.5 out of 10. I liked it. I like this. Brendan Fraser's character is a little bit far too nicey-nicey as a person. Uh, and I, I found parts of it a little bit cringy, but uh, I just can't believe such a person can see so much good in everybody, which there are people like that about. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on which way you look at. And, of course, uh, he does have his own problems as well. But uh, So that didn't quite work for me, his, his actual personality in this. But it sort of helps with that because he's playing off against some other interesting characters who are perhaps not so nice So or want to be nice and, you know, have struggled because of uh, what's happened in the past. Uh, there's not much said in this film, but if it's... Uh, no, sorry, there's not not there's much not said in this film. Not not much. Said. There's much not said in this film. Background and so you find bits about uh, out about, but there's certain characters get introduced and you sort of find out a little bit about them, but not not up to any great depth. It's all it's all about what's happening on on that particular moment, and it's sometimes a little bit painful to watch, as you'd expect. And it definitely, as I said, this was a play originally. It definitely has a made for stage. Feel. And if I'd gone to the theatre to watch this as a play, I wouldn't have been disappointed. I enjoyed it. Um, as a film, it just about works as well with some good characters. And it's all about the characters in this. It's all about either liking, not liking, or getting to like the characters in and around the main protagonist, of course, who it's very hard not to like despite his circumstances. It won't be to everyone's liking. It's very wordy, as you'd expect. There's a lot of quotes of Moby Dick and critiques of Moby Dick. And it can get a little bit, a little bit lost and repetitive, but uh, only brief moments. And there's certain things you have to, you know, it's gritty. It's, it's adult as well, you know, but not in a bad way, not in a bad way. Uh, interesting, uh, if ultimately both sad and joyful as well. So, yeah, I enjoyed this. As I said, I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. Interesting film, a little bit different to the norm, which, which uh, we all need that, don't we? we? We all see good films or okay films that we've seen sort of done before. But this is this is unusual and it's setting out. And, uh, yeah, for me, got got away with it. It was fine. I don't know what you think, guys, about this or anything to do with film and TV. It doesn't have to be this film. It'd be great to hear back from you. And until we meet again, and that's one thing, don't we? Please stay safe, everyone. Bye for now.